Hey guys, welcome back to my Ogo channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do vibrato on the fridge in three simple steps. Before we get into the tutorial, I do want to bring to your attention that if you are a beginner on the flute and you've just started learning, you shouldn't be watching this video. I mean, you can still watch, but what I mean is you shouldn't be learning the vibrato just yet. And that's because you need to be able to produce a pretty clear and stable tone first before you add on vibrato. However, if you're slightly more advanced and you can comfortably produce a clear tone on the flute, then you're probably ready to learn vibrato. Just keep that in mind because I really strongly recommend against learning vibrato too early on. So before we actually hop into the practical side of things, we need to understand vibrato in a theoretical way. What exactly is vibrato? In relation to the flute, vibrato is a fluctuation of tone. So you need to know that there are two main factors that influence the vibrato. One is the rise and fall of the pitch, and the second one is the rise and fall of volume. There are many different ways to produce vibrato on the flute, and they all sound completely different. The style of vibrato has evolved greatly throughout time. My personal approach to vibrato is to make it sound as natural as possible. So there are three possible ways to produce vibrato on the flute. The first one is by using your jaw or your lips. The second one is by using the muscles in your throat. And the last one is the fluctuation of your airspeed, which involves using your diaphragm. In my opinion, there's only one correct way, which is by using your diaphragm. A lot of people actually produce vibrato by using the throat, and that's just completely wrong. Because if you do it that way, you're going to be tensing up all the muscles over here, which means it's going to prevent you from producing a nice tone. A little tip to keep in mind here before we start is that remember vibrato is an equal rise and fall in the pitch. If you only rise above the note, your note is going to appear a lot sharper. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is play a few long notes without any fluctuation and wobbles in the pitch. Make sure it is as straight as possible. Remember to keep your muscles relaxed and don't tense. So it's a lot like a sighing motion. Okay, so once you've done that, let's pick a low note to practice on. I'm going to practice on G, and this time we're going to try adding in the rise and fall fluctuation into the note, by giving more air and less air. Remember to do it very slowly and remember to keep it as equal as possible. Remember to keep as still as you can and don't move your head up and down. You can even play G with just your left hand and have your right hand on your stomach so that you can be aware and feel the motion of your diaphragm going in and back out. Remember you don't want to jerk or have any sudden movements, you want it to sound smooth and continuous. Okay, so once you're comfortable with that, we're going to go on to the next step. We're going to play G major scale but do 8 pulses on each note. Set your metronome to crotchet equals 60. Practice that on the entire G major scale until you're pretty comfortable and then you can start speeding it up. Make sure that as you increase the speed that the vibrato doesn't stop when you change the note. So there you go, that is vibrato for you in three simple steps. I hope you found this tutorial very useful. I personally really like Trevor Wise's way of teaching vibrato. If you want to get access to his books, the link is in the description down below. I also offer help one-on-one -on, -one on my Patreon, so make sure you check that out down below as well. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you turn the notifications on. I post twice a week. Thanks guys, see you next time.